Okay, this video is going to be a quick walkthrough on how we made our air pruning beds and how they're performing right now um, with this mostly crop of chestnuts that you see in front of you. Um, air pruning beds have been around a bit, but I learned about them through Akiva Silver, and I'll put a link to his channel and his awesome stuff in this video as well as in the uh, notes below it. Um, so this is my version of it and just made from the, the materials we had at hand. As you can see, the entire bed is elevated off the ground on the bottom, and the bottom is open to the air, hence air pruning. So the idea behind that is that essentially once this seedling germinates, it sends down a taproot through the soil, which is basically continues to about here, and once that taproot presses through the mesh here at the bottom and hits air, it will self-prune and go dormant. And then that back propagates a signal up the taproot towards the, the soil horizon. And from there it sends out um, an additional hormonal signal to increase branching roots. So it sends out roots in all sorts of directions, including additional roots heading down. Um, in this way, we avoid circling roots that are typical with potted plants and trees raised in pots. Um, so that's like the main benefit of the air printing bed. The other one is that they're not in the ground, so if you have ground vermin, it's really a great way to protect your trees from ground vermin. Um, however, we also have squirrels here, so um, you won't see it in this photo because I pulled it off, so you don't have to, to look through it, but usually we have a two foot tall um, cage that's got mesh covering on it to keep squirrels and other uh, you know, bird vermin and stuff out, at least until the trees get up to a decent size. Um, I'll go ahead and show you the bottom here. So basically, this bed, was built on a two by six frame. That's this piece. So there's no soil here. Um, on top of this frame is six by six inch welded wire concrete remesh, concrete wire remesh, excuse me. Lay that down, tack that into, that, into this surface. On top of that goes half inch, um, just hardware cloth mesh. And then on top of that went some shade cloth we had lying around. This is what's actually gonna hold the soil and keep the soil from falling out but still creates a nice air permeable bottom that root tips can pop through, find air, and then air prune. Um, I'll sneak the camera here underneath the bed so you can kind of see what that looks like from the bottom. Hopefully this comes out. So you can see the welded wire, and then on top of that is half inch uh, hardware cloth, and then on top of that is the shade cloth. <clears throat> again, I'll throw in some more photos just so you can see what it all looked like in the various stages of being built. So then we filled this bed with about 10 inches of media. So from this height all the way up to about here, filled it up with soil, let that decompose for a little while. And then ultimately we layered in all of our chestnut seeds at different types of um, stratification intervals. This was one that didn't work out so great. This was one that worked out really well. And then the one we did basically with no treatment, we just put them in straight after picking them off the tree left them there, that was probably the best. So we're gonna do that again. Um, but yeah, I mean, this bed, if, if everything turned out the way this did, we could be fitting about 800 chestnut trees in here. So now the next step will be when these things start to go dormant um, later in the season, what we'll do is we'll just unscrew the sides here, pull off the boards, and we'll just kind of shake these trees out um, with their roots, just kind of shake them out. Um, and bundle them up and go basically try and get them directly into the ground at some of the various sites that we're planting these so that they have a really good non-circled highly branched root structure that's just ready to go in the ground with a bunch of dormant root tips that as soon as that thing gets in there they're going to explode in all kinds of different directions okay i wanted to also show you guys the irrigation system that we're using for this this is all on a timer this is a little half inch black poly irrigation line that comes up to the bed um, that we just ran a 90 and then ran a, a length of pipe down the end, capped it with a figure eight. And then basically every six inches, starting three inches into the bed, we are running quarter inch drip line with uh, emitters every six inches, half gallon an hour emitters. And these lines run all the way down the bed and circle and come all the way back. So we've got this nice grid, like there's five different lines here, you can see them. And just so that they would fit beneath the squirrel excluder cage, um, we kind of drilled into the wood a little bit just so they could sit down recessed and then the, the cage will sit right on top of this piece. So um, everything's automated. We don't do any hand watering of this bed um, and we let the soil dry out 
decently between waterings, which the chestnuts like. And uh, here's the massive squirrel excluder cage, um, which is unfortunate, but a necessity when you're putting tasty um, seeds in the ground, the squirrels will love to come pull those out. So um, that's the irrigation system for the bed. And I'll go ahead and show you two other beds we have going right now and show you how they're doing. Okay, here's another air pruning bed. This one has black locust right here in the foreground. And then behind it, we have another type of really super hardy honey badger legume tree that I don't know the name of yet. Um, but this one has just done incredibly well. And just to give you guys an idea of the density, I mean, you can see all these different trunks in here. Like this isn't, what, this is a six foot long by three foot wide bed. So 18 square feet. We probably have, I don't know, we probably got 300 trees in here. And that's just two thirds of the bed that germinated. Down here, we were working on uh, some Moringa seeds, but they were a bit old and didn't do too well, obviously. <laughs> so um, same setup here. If we shoot underneath, you can see the welded wire, the hardware cloth on top, and then the mesh or the, uh, the shed cloth, sorry. And then, um, yeah, through this, you get the little roots popping out. They'll air prune. They'll send that signal back up towards the crown of the tree. And then that will tell it to send out more roots in different directions. So we get no circling roots and really strong, healthy young trees that will oftentimes do in one year what a typical potted tree might take, you know, three to four years to do in terms of growth and a much better survivability, much better long-term health with that kind of root structure. There's our third and largest air pruning bed with the cage on. We had a bunch of different seed types. It was a very experimental one, so some didn't work, some did. Right here in the foreground are some Serotonia silica. This is carob. Um, they're doing a great. Right in here we had a couple mimosas and a couple dwarf koas that didn't really do too great. Again, super aggressive legume tree. Here we've got Thornless honey locust, transplanted a bunch of stuff that didn't do so hot. Yopon, total fail. We got a couple black mulberries popping through and then a few more late chestnuts we tried to save. But same deal, this one's got about a 10 inch deep soil media on top of a wooden frame. Same bottom, right? Concrete wire remesh, half inch hardware cloth, shade cloth. And those roots pop through the bottom, air prune, and then induce the rest of this to um, continue growing. Okay guys, that's our quick walkthrough of our air pruning bed system and just kind of the materials and the way we went about building them. Um, we'll come back in the winter time and shoot a video when we're pulling these guys out and just kind of take a look at the actual root structure, see how it all worked out. And then, um, yeah, we'll have more design improvements coming for next year from Honey Badger Nursery. Stay tuned and uh, drop any questions if you got them. We'll be happy to answer. Thanks, guys.